mama. Fernie, Fern. She's not gonna get up. I've been watching Fern closely. I'm really glad I figured out her due date wasn't actually March 1st or else I would be extremely concerned at this point. But I will tell you that today she's looking a lot different. Um, she's still a little early on the early end. Like she's still got another week and a few days until she's due. But she's changed a lot in the last 24 hours. She's also been resting a good bit this afternoon. So I'm definitely keeping a close eye on things. I'm so excited to meet that little calf. So I have an exciting update down in the garden. And you guys are going to love this. Look at it. It looks so good. Y'all did such a good job. Thank you. I like the edges. Yeah. That's really it's cool. Up. Yeah, it's really neat. Like so, hey. It. Hola. it looks awesome. Am I filming you? You filming me? I'm oh. filming. <laughs> I mean, you can film if you want to. But <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It looks so good. Kind of bring it up like that. Yeah. And you know, just have that. Showing. Little. Yeah, really simple. It's just a little wet. Jim and Michael have done a beautiful job on this. This is amazing. Look at what you, did. you see what you did? Look at what you did. I d did I do that? Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, did y'all sign it. it somewhere? No, we can. Yeah, sign it. Should I do AJR ball? Yeah. Should I do AJR ball? Yeah, do your thing man. Gems will be like this itty bitty thing. It'll be like a whole novel. <laughs> like scratch. Exactly. It'll be a novel scratching the thing. It's like, yeah, that's Jim's, uh, that's Jim's player. Yeah, you gotta sign it. Here, there's a good rock. Yeah, there you go. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll, I'll, I'll take where you, where you did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> add your signature in my footprint. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Major mark. All right. I'm going to have Michael come into the greenhouse. Oh, yeah. Because I like something that he has to say that I want him to share I with like you guys. You have to. <laughs> Thanks. We'll it's probably it. extremely hot in here. So you should leave, not hot. leave it open. This is so cool. <sighs> um, yeah, this will be better here. That The sun was behind us and it came. All right. This is much better. I was trying to record it out there, but the light is so bright. I got that at a thrift store the other day. Of course you did. Okay, so this is my friend Michael Ball. Michael, you love to talk about creating a space. Yes. Now, I know that like we met whenever we moved here to South Carolina. What you may not know is that for years I have talked about making a space you want to be in. Yeah. Um, because for the garden, obviously it's a lot of work. A lot of things you have to pour yeah. into it. And when you create a space you want to be in, and yeah. that's where you get into the habit of going, it's where you drink your coffee, it's yeah. where you have your friends over and sit around and talk, that the work doesn't become the only reason you go there. Right. And so I've always said, put a chair in your garden, create a space you want to be in. And it was funny because when I met you, yeah. you were like diving in, making your home amazing, had done yeah. tons of work inside and were really, had started working outside yeah. and have since like, in the last what year you've done it yeah the year yeah I, well the the biggest thing i think I, I learned is i spent my time going to places investing my energy and resources in someone else's paradise which is cool yeah like that's really awesome because you get inspiration and i still go do it i love going to disney i love any spot that's just sort of like this whimsical spot but then this like i don't know if it's like revelation or whatever you want to call it i could take the same amount of energy and the same amount of resources and start to transform my space. Yeah. Once you get in my space. Um, <laughs> throw it back. <laughs> yeah, no, just throw it back. Like, um, but transforming my space and I really, I don't, I don't know if I can explain like what it does to the heart. Um, cause I spent years investing a lot of resources and a lot of energy in all these other paradises, which is cool. But watching my kids, dream and come alive in a space that i've created yeah i like to me it's almost like this is like the highlight of this is my purpose yeah right and i'm sure there's like multiple things that i'm supposed to get done but watching my kids run like run wild i had a part of my property that was like unusable yeah they had thrown trash on it for like from like the 70s yeah. well we dig up bottles from really like, cool bottles. they're cool <laughs> bottles yeah like I mean, it was it was unusable. Yeah. And finally, like last year, we just started clearing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking back over the old footage, and I'm like, Good Lord, 
because it was a space that my kids couldn't use, nobody could use it, and, and now, now within a year, beautiful. it's like, and we're getting there, like, there's still, like, a ton of work. Like, I, right. I look around as, like, an artist, like, I'll, like, I'll look out like, <laughs> the patio, and I'm like, all right, like, I wish I would have done that rock like this, and like that. <laughs> but it's fine, like, it's, it's, there's so much more work that needs to be done, but I like what Walt Disney says, you know, Disney World will never be complete. Yeah. It will continue to grow as long as there's imagination in the world, and that's how I feel about my property. Watching them hop into a treehouse that wasn't there, yeah. climb on rocks that they couldn't get on, you know, they were covered in poison ivy. It, it's just this like magic that happens here yeah. for me. Well, this space is one step closer to being how I envisioned it. I will say this turned out better than I imagined it. This, it's amazing. Oh, cool. I'm interested to see it with the, uh, with the seal on it because you have a lot of really good copper um the darks yeah everything just pop all right the guys are getting ready to leave i've got a little bit of time so i'm going to plug away at my task of separating tomatoes somebody asked the other day when i showed my ceilings they said there's got to be at least 200 sprouts there are you growing commercially and i'm not growing commercially however i do grow my tomato plants fairly close together and i prune them which means you typically get larger fruits from your plants but maybe not quite as much volume, but you can plant more plants. So I think it probably comes out pretty evenly uh, versus growing them unpruned, which I did an experiment with that last year. And I maybe got more fruits, but they weren't nearly as big. And they took up so much more space. So I don't know, I have to prune them because it's extremely humid here. It's 100% humidity all through the summer and we'll end up with blight by July if we don't provide adequate airflow. I very much use the fruit from 150 plus plants. I do grow some heirlooms that are not necessarily the highest producers. Like when I choose my varieties, I'm not necessarily looking for the highest producing varieties. I do grow some varieties that are gonna produce really well, some good paste tomatoes that are great for canning. But for the most part, I'm looking for flavor and um, an experience. I like trying different things for different purposes. But I would say by making salsa and spaghetti sauce and just canning tomatoes for a big family like mine, I can very comfortably use 150 plants worth of fruit. So like sauce cooks down tremendously. You really need to know what you wanna do with your garden before you decide like how many plants you need. I, and y'all have heard me go off on this before. Um, everybody always says, how many plants should I plant for a family this size? And I'm like, that, it's such a broad question without a direct answer. You can read all the charts, but what kind? Where are you growing? How are you growing? Does your family like ketchup? Do they like tomato sauce? Do they like salsa? Do you eat tons of salsa throughout the summer? Like there are so many questions I have. So when people say, how many plants? I'm like, I don't know. You probably are gonna have to grow for a few years before you really narrow down exactly what you need to do. Back to the subjects that I was talking about with Michael, because I think that is such a good topic right now at the beginning of the season when you are thinking about your garden space. Now, obviously, our garden space is one, also my workplace. Please keep in mind, I'm doing YouTube out of my garden. This is also my business. Um, and so I do have people sometimes come and say, it's really not relatable how you're building your garden. And I actually completely commiserate with that. I understand. A lot of people look at that and they go, I'm never gonna build a garden like that. Um, either they don't want to, which a lot of people would not, if given the resources, this is not what they would choose. There are plenty of people out there, if given the resources that we've put into building this garden, would go buy something else that they really wanted or invest it somewhere else that they felt like was more important. This is, this is my wildest dream. Like when my dream came true and it was like, you have come to the place that you can spend your money on what you really, really want, you're looking at it, this is it. Um, which is amazing, it makes me wanna cry. Just thinking about that actually, it just brings up so, so much gratitude to me. But um, I know it's not necessarily relatable, but it is authentic. And when it comes to building this garden, if I tried to make it where more people could relate to it at the cost of doing 
my heart's desire and my dreams, I feel like I may be relatable at the cost of being authentic. And being authentic and honest is very important to me. So reining it back in to talking about a beautiful space. You don't have to build an extensive garden with fountains and flagstone and all of that stuff. You could in incorporate some flagstone in your garden. You could incorporate a fountain in your garden, water feature and pots and, you know, or raised beds or whatever. I love the arch trellises. That's gonna be a soon step here. We're gonna be getting the arch trellises all up, getting ready for the season. It's a great way to add whimsy to a space. I love wind chimes and uh, decor. I am constantly on the lookout for little things at thrift stores that I can incorporate into my garden, like finding little metal things and decorations or concrete. What I'm saying though, is that it is there's something of great value in creating a space that you want to be in, especially when you're talking about something like gardening that requires so much work. And I think so many people have a tendency to wanna to go till up their garden in the back corner of the yard, and they only go out there to work or to harvest. And yeah, maybe they go out and like walk around their garden a little bit, but for the most part, for a lot of people, it's viewed as a chore. I don't see it that way. I mean, I really, I really don't think that we should view the garden as a chore. There are chores regarding the garden, but if we view it as a refuge and we view it as a hobby and a joy and something that gives us tons of inspiration and fulfillment, we'll see it that way. How, how we choose to frame things in our mind goes greatly um, into how we're going to have a relationship with them. By intentionally creating seating spaces in a garden and going out and having your coffee routine or your evening if you drink tea in the evening, going out like when it's cool and right before sunset through the spring and the summer, go out and spend the time in your garden. I have these benches in front of the fountain. I love to come out and sit on that bench right there that faces where the sun sets behind the barn. Most of the time, if the weather's nice, if it's not cold or raining, even if it is cold, sometimes I'll be bundled up and I'll be sitting on that bench at sunset, watching the sunset from my garden. Through the summer, when it starts warming up and my kids aren't in school, I wake up early in the morning and make my coffee or my tea and come straight to the garden. And I have my morning coffee in the garden every morning. That's. The reason why it's so important for me to have a pavilion in the middle of the garden that I'm gonna put a table and chairs in is because we will host dinner in our garden and the kids and I will come out and have dinner. And right now it's a little inconvenient. It's all the way down the driveway from our house, but eventually when we build our house right across here, uh, you'll just walk right across the driveway and come out and have dinner in the pavilion. All of these are very intentional. Sometimes I talk about building insurance against yourself into your garden plan because when it's winter and you're rested and it's cold outside and you're thinking of spring and you're looking back at the pictures of last year's harvest and you're excited and you're in the seed catalog, seed catalogs are something else as far as convincing us that we are super human. I just feel like I could take on the world when I'm looking at a seed catalog. I'm like, I could grow that. I could grow all of this. Let's double the space. I, there's no limit to what I can do. That's what I feel when I'm looking at a seed catalog. Uh, but I want, us to be reasonable and have some insurance against ourselves and one of the big ways to do that is to put your garden where it's easily accessible very important to have your garden in your line of vision at least now there are people who make it work i know several of you are gardening on allotments where obviously your garden's not at your home and you go out of your way to go to that garden and take care of it and if that is what you have that's great. I actually love the idea of allotment gardening. I wish we did that more here in the United States. I know there are some community gardens, but that's like on my list of things I would love to create in the community one day. Cause I love the idea of a garden space that uh, people can go rent spaces somewhere where they don't have them at home. However, if you are at your home and you are trying to plan where your garden's gonna be, make it accessible. 
make it close to your house. It is really convenient when you're getting out of your car at the end of the day, when you're getting home from work, um, maybe you've got 20 minutes before you need to start cooking dinner, or you know, maybe you're able to come home on your lunch break and you're gonna have 30 minutes, or you can go pop out with your morning coffee. If your garden's close, it's a lot easier to just go spend a few minutes in it. If you're having a hard time keeping yourself going in the summer, whenever it's hot and it's hard, convincing yourself to keep going is a lot easier when the garden's right there staring you in the face. If you've got it in the back corner of your property, out of sight, out of mind, and it's easy to let it go if it's not right there accessible. Um, keeping watering in mind is a really big deal. This is one of those insurance against yourself things because winter gardener is very optimistic, just a very optimistic person, and not always honest with what summer gardener is going to be willing to do. You may think, oh, it'll be fine to haul water. I don't have to plant my plant my garden near where there's a faucet. Um, it'll be fine. In, if your garden's very big, it might not be fun. Now that said, my first garden year, I hauled water. No, actually my first few garden years because I did it in town. And then whenever we moved out to our property, my first garden was a few square beds in the front yard and I had to haul water out there because our house didn't have a functional faucet outside. And I did it all season, I hauled water. So where there's a will, there's a way. There is definitely commitment that can go into making whatever conditions work. But if you have the option of planting your garden near a water source, do that. The last thing, as I was saying, is to incorporate living spaces where they're not just working spaces. Incorporate resting spaces. For a long time, I just had a stump next to my garden where we had cut down a tree and I rolled a stump over there and it was my sitting stump. I just had a spot that I could sit down and survey and rest and enjoy the peace of a beautiful space. Decorate it, make it your own, give it a name. It will make all the difference in the world as far as your garden success goes. And I know that might sound silly to some people, but I assure you it's not silly. And I think that at this point, there are enough people here who have experience the benefit of that if you have would you mind commenting would you mind sharing your experience of creating a space that you love because i actually think that that might be one of the most valuable garden tips that i have to give in all seriousness it's that big of a deal it doesn't have to just be work turn it into your refuge turn it into your a place of peace turn it into where you go pray take your journal there turn it in turn it into your prayer place seriously it makes a huge difference in your outcome. We cannot just garden in order to obtain harvest because sometimes you don't get harvest and you'll quit. However, if you don't quit, you will get harvest. So y'all have to tell you this because this is so funny to me. Little coincidences like this, they mean a lot to me. So my friend, Miss Anita, I made videos going to her store last like a year to two years ago here in town um she has since moved down to alabama and I, that's where i bought this chair i bought this chair at her store i used she used to have this chair in her store and it was for sale but i would always sit in it when i would visit with her and when she announced she was moving i went ahead and bought it because i was like well i don't need it here anymore because you know she was selling the store and i was she messaged me her garden that she set up down there in alabama and I sent her a message back, picture of my chair in here, and um, she said, oh, I had to find the perfect chair for my garden because a friend once told me that it's very important to make it pretty. And I was like, I'm literally actively shooting a video about that very topic. So how cool is that? That just really tickled me. Wow, look at this. These things, since separating these seedlings out, they have doubled in size. That's really cool. I need to bring Ben out here so he can see all of his nasturtiums. They're looking really good. Honestly, I was getting ready to separate like lots of seedlings, but I don't feel like these are ready yet. They don't have their first true leaves. Oh, I have see something I can tell you guys. Here's my tip I learned from Brad Gates of Wild Boar Farms, the tomato guy. When you have seed seedlings that are stuck in the caps like this, Put some spit on them. You probably heard me say this before. He told me that and I thought it was super cool. They can get stuck in the caps really anytime, but specifically when humidity is low. Humidity is not low here and they still get stuck in the caps, but um, obviously spit is moisture, so that helps soften them, but there's an enzyme in your spit that helps break down food 
and it can help break those down. So if you have one that's really stuck and you put you lick your fingers and put some saliva on it, uh, do it a few times and usually you can get it, um, it'll fall off eventually. I have asparagus sprouts coming up everywhere. I don't really want to leave those here, but I, I'm not ready to take them out because I want to put them in a pot and move them somewhere. The birds planted the asparagus for me last year. So, feedback. Since we are discussing, oh, oh, happy birthday, little guys. Oh, I got a little zapped by the cold. It'll probably come back. These are all brassicas here going down the side. It's hoping to get one more little wave of cool weather stuff out to harvest like once we're taking them out we can be putting the peppers in but I don't know it might not work so these are gonna be like I'm gonna do long walls of cattle panels here these three beds are gonna have tomatoes on one side and then other stuff on the other side so these are gonna be long tomato walls and then um, over here I may also have some arches on those long beds like I make Put the tomato walls up where I can also have arches like on the other sides of the beds. Here, the plan is, which we haven't put gravel over here yet because I'm still deciding some things, but Maya was going to build, he's, we have some of the shelving left over from the greenhouse, and he was going to build like a vegetable washing station here that'll have like water run over to it so if something needs washed you can just come put it on this rack and wash it off real well. So I'm not hauling dirty stuff into the house. And I think I would like to do some sort of configuration, like how I have the clawfoot tub over there. I think I'd like to have some sort of configuration going on here because this space is so open. But I'm trying to decide how exactly I wanna do the cattle panels. I've missed my raised bed cattle panels, so I, I have a temptation to just go crazy here. What I really like is feeling when I'm sitting in the pavilion in the garden, I like the feeling of being sort of enclosed. And so I will probably arrange the arches and the trellises throughout this garden to sort of block it off. Even though I'm not blocking it off from the road, I'm blocking it off from my driveway. I just like that enclosed feeling for this space. This is also such an open space. I know it doesn't feel like it on the camera because you see so much vast open on either side but this garden is as wide as my old garden in Arkansas was from the driveway to the fence is the almost exact same width it just doesn't feel like it here because of that people also used to come to the garden in Arkansas often and tell me that it was actually smaller than they had felt like it was um, I think just with the backdrop of the trees and wide angle lenses it made it look a little bigger but it's about 70 feet wide I really do want to kind of wall this in some though so I think I'm probably gonna put back here some kind of wall of trellis maybe grow some green beans um, grow some things here that are going to hem this in a little and bring back sort of an intimate feeling. I had someone ask me like, hey, did you stop growing roses? I just haven't gotten, I have some roses in pots actually. Um, I have some in the ground, but our plan is to build arbors and put the roses on them. And I'm really hoping to at least get the containers for those built this year, but it just takes time. And we didn't want to build anything that was going to later be in our way. We're doing a lot of in and out. We've had a lot of equipment in and out. But I think that past this spring, we'll be at a place where we can actually put arbors up and get some roses started because it'll take them about a year to really look awesome. This wet concrete is just too tempting to walk by without making my mark. Beulah. That's my garden's name. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. God bless you. Until next time.